Good morning, everybody. I hope that you are having a great day. We are going to continue with reading Ramona Quimby, age eight. And I do need to make a clarification. Yes, or last week when we read, I kept referring to what we were reading as chapter five, and it was not. It was actually chapter four. So last week we read chapter four, and that was when Jesus and Ramona got in trouble about not wanting to eat dinner because it was tongues. And then this week we're reading chapter five and it is called The Extra Good Sunday. So I do apologize for that confusion. Sunday morning, Ramona and Beezus were still resolved to be perfect until dinner time. They got up without being called, avoided arguing over who should read Dear Abby's advice first in the paper, complimented their mother on her French toast, and off and went off through the drizzly rain to Sunday school neat, combed and bravely smiling. Later, they cleaned up their rooms without being told. At lunchtime, they ate without complaint the sandwiches that they knew were made out of made of ground up tongue. A little added pickled relish did not fool them, but it did help. They dried the dishes and carefully avoided looking in the direction of the refrigerator, lest their mother be reminded they were supposed to cook the evening meal. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Quimby were good humored. In fact, everyone was so unnaturally pleasant that Ramona almost wished someone would say something cross. By early afternoon, the question was still hanging in the air. Would the girls really have to prepare dinner? Why doesn't somebody say something, Ramona thought. Weary of being so good, weary of wanting to forgive her mother for the raw egg in her lunch. Well, back to the old foot, said Mr. Quimby, as he once more settled himself on the couch with the drawing pad and pencil and pulled off his shoe and sock. The rain finally stopped. Ramona watched for dry spots to appear on the sidewalk and thought of her roller skates in the closet. She looked into Beezus' room and found her sister reading. Ramona knew Beezus wanted to telephone Mary Jane, but had decided to wait until Mary Jane called to ask why she had not come over. Mary Jane did not call. The day dragged on. When dry spots on the concrete in front of the Quimby's house widened until moisture remained only in the cracks of the sidewalk, Ramona pulled, up, pulled her skates out of her closet to her father, who was holding a drawing of his foot at arm's length to study it. She said, well, I guess I'll go out and skate. Aren't you forgetting something, he asked. <clears throat> what, asked Ramona, knowing very well what. Dinner, he said. The question that had hung in the air all day was answered. The matter was settled. We're stuck, Ramona told Beezus. Now can we stop being so good? The sisters went into the kitchen, shut the door, and opened the refrigerator. A package of chicken thighs, said Beezus with a groan, and a package of frozen peas, and yogurt, one carton of plain, and one banana. There must have been a special on yogurt. She closed the refrigerator and reached for a cookbook. I can make place cards, said Ramona, as Beezus frantically flipped pages. You can't eat place cards, said Beezus. Besides, cornbread is your job because you brought it up. Both girls spoke in whispers. There's no need to let their parents, their mean old parents, know that they were going, what was going on in the kitchen. In their mother's recipe file, Ramona found the card for cornbread written in Mr. Mr. Quimby's grandmother's shaky handwriting, which Ramona found difficult to read. I can't find the recipe for chicken thighs, said Beezus. Just whole chicken. All I know is that mother bakes the thighs in a flat glass dish with some kind of sauce. mushroom soup mixed with something and with some kind of little speck stirred in, Ramona remembered that much from watching her mother. Jesus opened the cupboard of canned goods. But there isn't any mushroom soup, she said. What are we going to do? Mix it, mix up something wet, suggested Ramona. It would serve them right if it tasted awful. Why don't we make something awful, asked Jesus, so they know we, how we feel when we have to eat tongue. What tastes really awful, Ramona was eager to go along with the suggestion, united with her sister against their enemy, 
for the moment, their parents. Bees is always practical, changed her mind. It wouldn't work. We'd have to eat it too. And they're so mean, we'll probably have to do the dishes besides. Anyway, I guess you might say our honor is at stake because they think we can't cook a good meal. Ramona was ready with another solution. Throw everything in one dish. Beezus opened the package of chicken thighs and stared at them with distaste. I can't stand touching raw meat, she said, as she picked up a thigh between two forks. <laughs> Do we have to eat the skin, asked Ramona, all those yucky little bumps? Beezus found a pair of chicken tongs, kitchen tongs. She tried holding down the thigh with a fork and pulling off the skin with the tongs. Here, let me hold it, asked said Ramona, who was not squeamish about touching such things as worms or raw meat. She took a firm hold of the thigh while Beezus grasped the skin with the tongs. Both pulled and the skin peeled away. They played tug of war with each thigh, leaving a sad looking heap of skin on the corner on the counter and a layer of chicken thighs in the glass dish. Can't you remember what little specks mother used, asked Beezus? Ramona could not. The girl studied the spice shelf, unscrewed jar lids, and sniffed. Nutmeg? No. Clove? Terrible. Cinnamon? Uh-oh. Chili powder? Well, yes, that must be it. Ramona remembered the little specks were red. Beza stirred half a teaspoon of, red, of dark red powder into the yogurt, which she poured over the chicken. She slid the dish into the oven at 350, the temperature for chicken recommended by the cookbook. From the living room came the sound of their parents' conversation, sometimes serious and sometimes highlighted by laughter. While we're slaving out here, thought Ramona, as she climbed up onto the counter to reach the box of cornmeal. After she climbed down, she discovered she had to climb up again for baking powder and soda. She finally knelt on the counter to save time and asked Beezus to bring her an egg. It's a good thing Mother can't see you up there, remarked Beezus as she handed Ramona an egg. How else am I supposed to reach things? Ramona successfully broke the egg and tossed the shell onto the counter. Now I need buttermilk. Jesus broke the news. There was no buttermilk in the refrigerator. Well, what'll I do? whispered Ramona in a panic. Here, use this, Jesus. Thrust the carton of banana yogurt at her sister. Yogurt is sort of sour, so it might work. The kitchen door opened, opened a crack. What's going on in there? inquired Mr. Quimby. Jesus hurled herself against the door. You stay out, she ordered. Dinner is going to be a surprise. For a moment, Ramona thought Beezus had been going to say a mess. She stirred egg and yogurt together, measured flour, spilling some on the floor, and then discovered she was short of cornmeal. More panic. My cooking teacher says you should always check to see if you have all the ingredients before you start to cook, said Beezus. Oh, shut up, R Ramona. <coughs> Ramona reached for a package of cream of wheat because it grains were about the same size as cornmeal. She scattered only a little on the floor. Something was needed to sop up the sauce with the little red specks when the chicken was served. Rice. The spilled cream of wheat gritted underneath Beezus' feet as she measured rice and boiled water according to the directions on the package. When the rice was cooking, she slipped into the dining room to set the table and then remembered they'd forgotten salad. Carrot sticks were quickest. Beezus began to scrape carrots in to the sink. Yippee, yelled Ramona from the counter. The rice, the lid off the pan, was chattering. Beezus snatched the large pan from the cupboard and transferred the rice. Do you girls need any help, Mrs. Quimby called from the living room? No, answered her daughters. Another calamity. The cornbread should bake at 400 degrees a higher temperature than that needed for the chicken. What was Ramona to do? Stick it in the oven anyways, Beezus' face was flushed. In went the cornbread beside the chicken. Dessert, whispered Beezus. All she could do was find a can of boring pear halves. Back to the cookbook. Heat with a little butter and serve with jelly in each half, she read. Jelly half a jar of apricot jam would have to do. The pears and butter went into a saucepan. Never mind, the syrup spilled on the floor. 
Beezus, Ramona held up the package of pears. Beezus groaned. Out came the partially cooked chicken while she stirred the thawing pears into the yogurt and shoved the dish back into the oven. The rice! They had forgotten the rice, which was only beginning to stick to the pan. Quick, take it off the burner! How did their mother manage to get everything cooked at the right time? Put the carrot sticks on a dish, pour the milk, candles, Beezus whispered. Dinner might look better if we have candles. Ramona found two candle holders in the p- and two partly melted candles of uneven length. One of them had been used in a Halloween jack-o'-lantern. Beezus struck the match to light them, because although Ramona was brave about touching raw meat, she was skittish about lighting matches. Was the chicken done? The girls anxiously examined their meat main dish. Bubbling and brown around the edges, Beza stabbed the thigh with a fork. When it did not bleed, she decided it must be done. A tooth pricked into the cornbread came out clean. The cornbread was done. Flat, but done. Grit, grit, grit sounded under the girls' feet. It was amazing how a tiny bit of spilled cream of wheat could make the entire kitchen floor gritty. At last, the dinner was served. The dining room light turned off. The dinner announced in the cook's tent with anxiety that was hidden by candlelight. Fell into their chairs as their parents seated themselves. Was this dinner going to be edible? Candles, exclaimed Mrs. Quimby. What a festive meal. Let's taste it before we decide, said Mr. Quimby with his most wicked grin. The girls watched anxiously as their father took his first bite of chicken. He chewed thoroughly and said with more surprise than necessary, Why, this is good. It really is, agreed Mrs. Quimby, and took a bite of the cornbread. Very good, Ramona, she said. Mr. Quimby tasted the cornbread, just like grandmother used to make, he pronounced. The girls exchanged surprised smiles, suppressed smiles. They could not taste the banana yogurt and by candlelight no one would tell that the cornbread was a little pale the chicken Ramona decided was not as good as her parents thought or pretended to think but she could eat it without gagging everyone relaxed and Mrs. Quimby said chili powder was more interesting than paprika and asked which recipe they had used for the chicken Ramona answered our own as she exchanged another look with Beezus. Paprika, those little specks in the sauce should have been paprika. We wanted to be creative, said Beezus. Conversation was more comfortable than it had been the previous evening. Mr. Quimby said he finally was satisfied with the dishes drawing, which looked like a real foot. Beezus said her cooking class was studying the food groups everyone should eat every day. Ramona said there was this boy at school who called her Egghead. Mr. Quimby explained that Egghead was a slang for a very smart person. Ramona began to feel better about yard ape. The meal was a success. If the chicken did not taste as good as the girls had hoped, and the cornbread did not rise like their mother's, both were edible. Beezus and Ramona were silently grateful to their parents for enjoying or pretending to enjoy their cooking. The whole family cheered up. When they had finished their pears with apricot jam, Ramona gave her mother a shy smile. Mrs. Quimby smiled back and patted Ramona's hand. Ramona felt much lighter. Without using words, she had forgiven her mother and the unfortunate egg, and her mother had understood. Ramona could be happy again. You cooks have worked so hard, said Mr. Quimby, that I'm going to wash the dishes. I'll even finish clearing the table. I'll help, volunteered Mrs. Quimby. The girls exchanged another secret smile. As they excused themselves and skipped off to their rooms before their parents discovered the pile of chicken skins and broken eggshell on the counter, the carrot scrapings in the sink, and the cream of wheat, flour, and pear syrup on the floor. All right, so it seems like even though they had to improvise just a little bit, dinner was a success, and they did a great job. Well, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. We will be reading Chapter 6 after uh, Thanksgiving break. Have a fantastic afternoon.